Morris will be starting his fourth consecutive match after a couple of months in the wilderness. His withdrawal of transfer request has been a major boost in Celtic's troubled season. And the major shock in that Aberdeen team is the absence of top scorer Ian Jess, who's been relegated to the bench in what may well be a tactical manoeuvre. Stephen Wright continues at right back in place of the injured Stuart McKimmy, and Peter van de Ven returns after missing the last couple of matches. And wearing Jesse's number 10 jersey is Ian Cameron, who is starting a first-team match for only the third time this season. His Aberdeen career has been blighted by injuries since his £300,000 transfer from St. Mirren in 1989. And the match referee this afternoon, one of our most highly rated officials, Douglas Hope from Erskine. A match of immense significance for both sides. Celtic determined to justify the faith of their vociferous support by getting back in the rails and Aberdeen requiring a good performance to maintain pressure at the top of the Premier Division. Peter van de Ven committing the first foul of the match with that tackle on Paul McStay. But a yardstick will be formed for the sides of the fact that their last matches were each against Hibs. Celtic played Hibs a fortnight ago and drew one apiece here. And last week, when Celtic were idle, Aberdeen beat Hibernian 2 0. And Aberdeen certainly have had the sign on Celtic this season so far with two three goal victories. So the men from the north coming here full of confidence, but recognising, I've no doubt, that they face a very difficult task against a determined Celtic side. Headed away by White. Good play from McStay. Releasing Collins through the middle. Ball runs for Coyne. And Craney was caught off balance when that pass came through. That was excellent refereeing by Douglas Holt, because he could easily have given a foul against Brian Grant for the challenge of John Collins, but when the ball ran free to a Celtic player, he allowed the advantage roll. Miller plays it forward, there's David Robertson, now Mason. And De Ven. Rogan did well, but couldn't keep his feet. Well, too long in the air, perhaps, for Stephen Wright, but he finds Mason, or tries to find him through the middle. And Morris taking a very safe course there, playing the ball out for the throw knew exactly what he was doing. I've been playing it in first time. Elliot comes to meet it. Excellent pass that from McStay. Picking out Coyne instantly with the pass on the half ball. Good positioning on the far side by Young McNally. Miller available inside. That's good play by Miller. Brainy to Coyne, and brilliantly blocked there by Theo Stelders. But some superb play and attack there from Celtic. They're still coming forward. Here's Rogan. Charging forward. It's cut off there by Peter van de Ven. And Aberdeen now looking to strike on the counter. Had it down by Morris. McNally turns it right back to Elliot and Bonner. But what superb play that was from Celtic. It was all inspired by the confident, jinking play of Joe Miller, who tempted and teased David Robertson, then played a great ball inside for Craney, and his pass into the angle there for Tommy Coyne. But of that fine save from the feet of Theo Stavis. Coyne trying to hold off right, getting good support inside from Collins. Coyne, full tilt now on the left. There's the chance for Craney. And some determined defending there and desperate stuff even at that from Hans Hillhouse. Well, great flank play once again from Celtic, this time from the left with Tommy Coyne breaking. The pass came from Collins. That was just too high for Craney, and then Hillhouse intercepted. Even going for that with Craney. Not too convincing with the clearance, though. Here's McStay. Another cross to the left for Celtic. Running at right. That's fine play by Miller. 
Well, there's always a special edge playing against your former club, and Joe Miller's demonstrating that this afternoon. That was fine wing play, this time from the left. Running at Stephen Wright, going inside him, setting himself the shooting chance, and that wasn't far away. They passed the midway point in the first half, and Celtic certainly have looked the more dangerous side so far, but here's a break from Aberdeen with Jim Betts. Well, he makes those long runs from midfield position so effectively and picked up a good pass there from Hillhouse. Chance now, though, for Trainee for Celtic. And Theo Snelder is standing up to the shot, making an excellent block. But some fine play again from Celtic on a quick counter-attack there. And Jerry Craney certainly had that shot with thundering power. There's Craney. Morris. Into space for Coyne. The Bicular finds Craney. And yet another splendid move from Celtic for no reward. Well, the ball played forward here by Morris with an excellent one. Just look at this back heel, though, from Tommy Coyne into the path of Jerry Craney, left foot, first time, over the bar. Quite doing well against Mason, he'll have to do it again though, and he did, but Grant picks up the loose ball, here's Mason. An awkward one, it falls back to Brian Grant, it's set up now for Cameron. The deflection, and that could easily have found the net for Aberdeen. Ian Cameron will be disappointed, I'm sure, with that shot, because he had an excellent chance here. A bit of luck about the ball as it broke off Chris Morris. Ryan Grant set up very well indeed for Cameron, and it was deflected beyond Bonner for the corner. Cameron playing it in. Grant's head up, back to Ian Cameron. Good slight of foot there to go past Coyne. Brian Grant, Irvin coming to meet that, Elliot taking no chances. Well, difficult to blame Paul Elliot for that. Pat Bonner wasn't happy about it, but you can see that the big centre-half believes it was his ball. Celtic will undoubtedly feel a little bit aggrieved at not being in front at this stage. View of the balance of play so far. Here's Craney trying to do something about that, and Coyne. The shot certainly forced Snelders to scramble across his line. But on reflection, I wonder if Tommy Coyne feels that he should have shot earlier. Perhaps right at that point, he tried to get into a better position by going past McLeish. But at the end, he only stabbed that shot towards goal. Still Van de Ven available. It's the Lynch man. Midfield, right in front of the back four, Peter Van de Ven, allowing Jim Brett to support the front two. But there's no more time for action in a very entertaining first half, dominated right from the start by Celtic, who played with a lot of invention and urgency. It certainly would have been value for a lead in the opening half. But once again, after about half an hour, Aberdeen came back into the match and it became much more even towards half-time. So the score at Celtic Park, Celtic nil, Aberdeen nil. Aberdeen uh, playing against the wind for the second half and sending Stephen Wright forward very quickly on the right for the first attack of the second half. Here's Paul Mason, followed by Collins. Well, Aberdeen manager Alex Smith and his co-manager Jockey Scott may well have been a little bit displeased with that first half performance in the sense that Celtic took the initiative from the start and Aberdeen took a long time to assert themselves. So it may be interesting now to see what changes have been made in approach and in tactics. Celtic profiting from their three-man central defence with four in midfield and three up front in the first half against Aberdeen in a 4-4-2 formation. Although the four in the middle seem to play in a diamond shape with Peter van de Ven in front of the two central defenders. Trying to play that beyond Miller now. Aberdeen could suffer for that error. Here's Joe Miller. 
Goes past Van de Ven, pulling it back now. Great chances on for McStay. Disappointment all over the face of the Celtic skipper. But this was magnificent play from Joe Miller. Look at the way it takes on the Scotland centre half, Alec McLeish. And then Peter van de Ven avoided tripping him there. It was pulled back by Miller. It came off Snelders and it was snatched over the bar by McStay. And it looks as though Jerry Craney will come off. Andy Walker is the replacement. Well, the match started in promising fashion for Jerry Craney, but things didn't work out for him as the game wore on. So the Celtic attack is freshened up by Andy Walker. It's good play though by Cameron, who's very fleet footed on the break. And another quick man outside him, David Robertson. Tackle beautifully judged there by McNally. Challenge there from Irvin, a good one and a fair one, and Walker was surely offside there. The linesman says no, it's a great chance for Celtic, but now there's an offside flag against Timmy Coyne. It won't count. Well, I reckon that that was justice being seen to be done there. The linesman there, Gordon McBride, deciding that Andy Walker was onside, but it certainly didn't look like that from here. But Walker electing to use Tommy Coyne, who was certainly then in an offside position, gave the linesman the opportunity to raise his flag, and the referee has chopped the goal off. So Tommy Coyne denied his tenth goal of the season. Robertson in trouble here. And the free kick's been given against the Aberdeen fullback. With a foul on Joe Miller. Got himself in a bit of a tangle there, Robertson. Miller to Walker. Did well to get a bit of close. Here's Paul Elliott. Well, a fine intrusion into the penalty area by the big centre half. And the ball again not running kindly for something. A good free kick this. Well played by Walker. Love to get across. Get a little touch on there from Coyne. And Elliott couldn't control the ball when it reached him. Switching the ball to Van de Ven on the right. Stephen Wright goes on the outside. It's good play from Aberdeen. And that was inches away from Brian Grant. What a fine piece of play by the 19-year-old fullback Stephen Wright, who covered 40 yards in very, very quick time there to get on the end of this pass from Peter Van de Ven, who knew perfectly well he was coming. Now when this ball was drilled across, it just needed a touch, and Grant couldn't supply it. And there's going to be an alteration made by Aberdeen. Now, this is a clear attempt, I think, to win the match. Bringing on Ian Jess to replace Peter van de Ven. He scored 14 times this season, Ian Jess. Four goals against the Fama a couple of weeks ago. And that's a very adventurous move by Aberdeen in their attempt to get both points this afternoon. Mason, now Cameron, and Bett, on the left is Grant. It's a good return ball, here's Brian Grant with a chance for Aberdeen, setting up for Mason. 
and the whistle has gone for a free kick to Celtic. There was certainly no foul on Paul Mason. That was a good tackle on the Aberdeen number nine inside the penalty area. So here was Grant taking this return pass. It was a good one to this. Grant then set the ball up for Mason to try to go past his man there, but Derek White made a very good tackle. And then the free kick went to Celtic. Headed down by Irvin. Here's Collins. Coin on the turn. Well, excellent positioning there by Theo Snelders. Good handling also, got his body behind that. This is a classic example of good goalkeeping here, but Coin did well, turning there away from Brian Irvin. And there was Snelders to make the save. Here's McStay. Driving towards the byline, good play from McStay. No one coming in at the far post for a header. But Celtic have earned the corner kick. So now it's Celtic who are stating their intentions very clearly. They want to win this match, they're not happy with the draw. And the same can be said of Aberdeen, that means we've had a great closing phase of the match. And there's Elliot, it's blocked to the line. Comey Coin scores for Celtic. The last minute of the match. The corner kick from Fulton. Look for Paul Elliott here. What a fine header. It's blocked on the line by Snelders, but there's Tommy Coyne at point blank range. And Celtic surely now have won the match. Celtic deserve for their efforts. Their top scorer, Tommy Coyne, has got it. It's his tenth of the season, and surely now there's not enough time for Aberdeen to come back. Well, just listen to the singing around us from the Celtic supporters. It's been a long, troubled season so far, but this must go some way to redressing the balance. It really has been a superb performance all the way through and remember against one of the best teams in the country in Aberdeen but Celtic have battled right to the end they were never content with a draw always looking for the winning goal and it looks as though it's been provided by Tommy Coyne indeed it has the match is over the Celtic fans stand to applaud their favourites, the smiles on the faces of these Celtic players tell the story. Tommy Coyne, once again, the goal-scoring hero. It was a match of genuine quality. It was set up by Celtic something first, but Aberdeen were always a major threat. But in the end, it was Celtic who got what I consider was a just reward for all their effort with that goal in the final minute from Tommy Coyne, it's Celtic 1, Aberdeen 0. Tommy, had you despair of that winning goal ever?